Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I'm talking to you about how to not be so hard on yourself and have that help you keep your anxiety at bay. It really matters, and it's one of the places we actually have some control. Beating ourselves up is perhaps an old habit or our default even. Many people have been doing this to ourselves, to themselves, for many, many, many years. But shining the light of awareness on it can really help you get out of this bad habit and to build a new habit of learning to see yourself in a way that does not need to be scolded, like you may have done so many times in the past, because it really is an anxiety trigger. Think of these kinds of comments that people do say to themselves. I have heard these things from people that they have said to themselves because they think that they are using the stick on themselves and they're going to be better, but it's really being hard on themselves. I'm too fat. I'm dumb. I'm a terrible parent. They'll never hire me. I never get it right. I've never done anything good. I keep failing. I'm a failure. And on and on and on. Sometimes the things we tell ourselves can be incredibly harsh and negative. And this negative inner voice or the inner critic can make us feel like we're not good enough. And it can even at times make us feel like we're worthless. This can only be felt as an unfavorable and dangerous situation by the hair trigger, anxious mind. The amygdala will just sense danger from those kinds of thoughts. If you are oversensitized and have a hair trigger amygdala, that anxious kind of mind is going to feel that those harsh words are dangerous situations and it's a, it's a ticket to a trip down the wormhole. We all have this inner critic and we all use it, uh, our inner critic to help us become who we want to be, to be better at doing something, to to not continually do a a mistake over and over again. But if we are consistently overcome by negative thoughts about ourselves, it can truly impact our well-being. If you're too self-critical, it can cause high anxiety, depression, or maybe you've experienced this, total inertia where you can't move past certain experiences and feel like the wormhole is your permanent home. So what are we going to do to overcome this self-criticism? There's a, a whole continuum here. You could be, you know, just dipping your toe into this lightly, or you could be someone who really is beaten down by this self-criticism. So One of the best cures for this self-criticism is self-compassion. This means treating yourself kindly. And by kindly, I mean the same way that you would treat someone that you really cared about. Self-compassion is a way to turn your negative inner voice into a friendly, positive voice. And there are many ways that we can do just that. I think I jotted down seven of them here. Yep. The first one is our old standby, and my favorite is to meditate. If you're an overthinker and you're super self-critical, meditation for more than one minute is not going to be easy. I know that. But as we have 
talked about here so many times, you can start with one minute and you can build your way up to five and then to 10 and then to 20. It's just like exercise. You have to train and build up your strength and stamina, and then you will get there. But you cannot just jump in. If you are an overthinker and very self-critical, it will be hard to do anything more than that one minute. And even the one minute may be very difficult as your anxiety is flaring but give it a try. Meditation makes a world of difference. The second one I noted here is to use positive affirmations. Saying short, encouraging statements to yourself is a great way to build up your self-compassion. There are um, a number of related uh, episodes dedicated to uh, positive affirmations and encouraging statements. So be sure to check out episode 580, 580, Conquering Anxiety with Affirmations. The third one here is to talk to yourself like you would a friend. When your inner conversation starts to go negative from rethinking a situation over and over, and then it goes into rumination, stop and think, what would you say if you were talking to a friend and they were telling you these things? Or how would you talk to a little five-year-old, a little niece or nephew or your own child? Often we are responding to our own little child inside of ourselves. So show yourself the same compassion you'd show a friend or your own inner five-year-old. The fourth one is to talk to people that you trust. Self-criticism makes you feel isolated. It can really help us to feel alone if we are down on ourselves. But everyone has these experiences. Believe me, I talk to a lot of people and this is common. I have had this. We all have to learn to not be so hard on ourselves. So share how you're feeling with someone you trust Sharing your feelings with others can help you feel less alone and more part of a community, more part of the human community. Consider joining our coaching membership community and share with like-minded people who are on the anxiety healing path. That's a great way to be able to share and feel like you are understood. The fifth one I have here is write down what you're thinking. Again, another one of my favorites is to journal. Start journaling. Even if you only write for three to five minutes, it can be very helpful to go back and read what you were thinking about yourself. Write down those thoughts that you're saying to your head, yourself in your head, that the mind is going over and over those, oh, you were so stupid. Imagine writing that down. I'm so stupid. It's a great tool to help you see the missing piece of the story or to help you work through an event or something that happened without being so hard on yourself by actually seeing it and saying, well, really, I don't really think I'm stupid. So stop saying it in your mind. Another resource for you here is to check out episode 561, 561. That's 11 reasons to journal if you are anxious. And that will give you some more ideas on how journaling can help. The sixth one I wrote down is get outside. If your inner dialogue starts to get get out of control, and believe me, it can get out of control quickly, take a breather and go outside. Getting outdoors into nature is a great tool to help us to tame the inner critic and bring us back into the present moment. It can be as simple as taking a walk around the block and looking at our surroundings, the trees, the grass, the mountains that are around you, or even just gazing out the nearest window or looking up at the sky. Get outside and feel 
a piece of nature. It helps us to have a little bit more of a sense of where we are at our place in the universe. And the seventh one and final one that I have here is to talk to a therapist or a coach or a clergy. Sometimes we are just plain old stuck and we can use the help of people who know this terrain. So don't hesitate to reach out for help outside of your usual network of family and friends. Sometimes we need somebody who is trained in this and can see what's going on and help us to be able to understand the terrain so that we can move through it more gracefully. Having kinder and more compassionate conversations in our own heads can be a life changer. We all have our days where we feel less kind or optimistic, but with these practices mentioned, you can have more kind days than not. And that's the key here with everything that we are doing here. Even though some of the changes and practices are very slow and small, and it can feel like, I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere, but it is just learning to have a little bit more kindness, a little bit more compassion than the day before. And that will just continue to grow. Don't, you don't have to leap into perfection. There is no perfection. So one of the things we want to be careful of, especially if you have this, um, tendency to be really hard on yourself and then having that feed your anxiety is to not look for perfection. It doesn't exist. We are all humans and we make mistakes. We do things we said we weren't going to do. We fall down. But the idea is to get back up again and be more kind and compassionate to ourselves dust ourselves off and go forward because the more kind we are to ourselves when we have made a big mistake, really the less apt we are to do it again because we can see that, geez, that was a mistake, but I am human and I can do better. I can move myself forward I don't have to be stuck in this, but you can see where if we are hard on ourselves and beating ourselves down, that we can just, we just go down the wormhole. We stay stuck in the negative thinking and that does not help us make better decisions. It does not help us to improve and move forward. It does the opposite. So please pay it. You know, it sounds Pollyanna-ish. Oh, be kind and compassionate to yourself. But it is true medicine for getting out of the wormhole and to stop feeding the anxiety cycle. So here's to all of us having more kind days than not. I hope this was helpful for you, and I look forward to hearing from you. You can send email to anxietycoachespodcast at gmail.com. And now for today's quote. If your compassion does not include yourself, it is incomplete. And that's from Jack Cornfield. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at the anxietycoachespodcast.com. 